First off, how loved are you? Hearts, dates, chocolates, diabetes. <laughs> yes, we're talking about Valentine's Day. In the past, Valentine's Day was about romance, love, harana, and diabetes. But today, it's very different. Uh, now, there's so much bitterness going around with phrases like sana all being the trending. You know, love is not being marketed even. Bitterness is. The sayings are moving on, nahulog pero di sinalo, broken without an end. Things like those. Things like those. And they're everywhere. It makes me think, what's wrong with the world, mama? Where's the love? So why is this? Why is this? For me, it's because we all want to experience love. We look for people that would accept us for who we are, forgive us when we make mistakes, and stand by us till the end. Someone who would love us even if we're old, impatient, short-tempered, jealous, or make, simply make bad life decisions. And that's where we are now. I wanted to share this message and these things to you and tell you that there is someone out there who loves you and is giving his all for you. Whether you are in a relationship, whether you are single, moving on, or it's complicated, there is someone who is pursuing you endlessly. And his name is God. God's love can be shown in the Bible in John 3.16 when it says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only son, so that whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. He did this for us. The question is why? Why did he do it? He had a plan. He had a purpose for it, which is found in John chapter 10, verse 10. I came that they might have life and might have it more abundantly, meaning that it might be full and meaningful. So the question is, why is not everyone experiencing this abundant life? Why is not everyone ex experiencing a full and meaningful life? I even know some people who are lost and find no meaning to life. They simply just go where the wind takes them, even though the wind is no longer blowing. And the answer to that is simple. That is sin. God is weird, <laughs> actually, God is weird. Humanity always had sin from the very beginning until now. Adam and Eve had sin of disobedience. After them came Abraham who was old, who had a wife named Sarah, who was impatient. They weren't patient and they did not wait on the promise of God. There was Moses, who was short-tempered, who also had a sister named Miriam, who was a gossiper. David, a king, had an affair. His son Solomon, considered as the wisest, had poor life decisions. He had many wives. And at to a point that he worshipped other gods. And along the line, there's John the Baptist, who doubted, despite knowing who Jesus was, who the Messiah was, he doubted. There was Martha, a warrior. Peter, who denied Christ three times twice. Paul, who was a murderer. And the list goes on. And in this list of sinners, there's this young boy, who despite growing up knowing many things about Jesus, one day had love problems and decided that God did not exist. After experiencing heartbreak, unanswered prayers, and life problems, this young boy decided that God was not real. He began to consider sinful acts as plain acts and began committing them one by one. This young boy tried to convince others of God's non-existence. A young boy who blurted out words against God, angrily swearing, shouting, and hating from the depths of his heart, regretting ever believing that there was even a God. What awaits these people? Well, Romans 6.23 says this, death, which is spiritual separation from God. To this day, I still wonder how hurt God was because of the sinners. I mean, to me, they deserve to be punished. Yes, even to that young boy. Do they deserve it? Yes. But did they get it? Well, that's why God is so weird. In Romans 5 verse 8, it says, But God demonstrates His own love towards us, in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. 
Christ died for you. Jesus, who could have lived comfortably in heaven, came down to earth, lived like us, and suffered a pain that he shouldn't have to. In Luke 22, verse 42, Jesus says this, Father, if you are willing, please take this cup of suffering away from me. Yet despite all that, he endured it all and obeyed God's will for our sake. When he said, yet I want your will to be done, not mine. He didn't wait for people to be destroyed by themselves in their own sin. Rather, he not only saved them, but lifted them up. Remember those people I mentioned earlier? Even though those people committed grave sin, Abraham is titled Father of Nations. Moses is known as the most important Jewish prophet. David is called the man after God's own heart. Solomon is known as the wisest person. John, for John, Jesus said that no other man born of a woman is greater than him. Peter became the head of the first church. Paul has a school named after him, even to this day. And that young boy is sitting right here, speaking to you. If God could love people like this, how much more of you? But the thing is, this is not a love that must be accepted or is required to be taken. Rather, it's a gift, freely given to everyone, freely given to you. Jesus said in Revelation 3.20, Here I am, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come in and eat with that person, and they with me. It is an open invitation to a loving relationship. He is not insisting that you love him. He is asking and hoping that you do. If you don't want to, then it's fine. However, if you want to open your heart to him, then he will surely enter. And you will experience love beyond your understanding. If you want to let him into your heart, it is very simple. You can simply open the door to your heart and let him allow him to come in. You can do this through a simple prayer. Mind you, prayer is only talking with God. You don't need any complicated preparations or words. Just talk to him. Here's an example of a prayer. Jesus, thank you. Thank you for loving me. Thank you for accepting me and forgiving me despite of how I am. I want to enter in a relationship with you. Please let me experience your love. Now, if this prayer expresses the desire of your heart, then we can pray this right now. I will lead you into prayer. I will go at it phrase by phrase. And you can repeat either silently or loudly to God. So this is your time. If you want to accept Him, it's up to you. But in respect for those who want to, let's all bow our heads and let's pray. Jesus, thank you. Thank you for loving me. Thank you for accepting me and forgiving me despite of how I am. I want to enter in a relationship with you. Please let me experience your love. Amen. Now that's it. Simple as that. Now, going back, how loved are you?